everyone. I'm Santa and you're watching Smarter Than Yesterday. And we're here at High Octane with Marie Purvis. She is a Nike master trainer and she has trained many celebrities such as Leah Michelle from Glee, uh, famous tennis player Serena Williams and many, many more. So can you please tell us how you became a Nike master trainer? Hi. Uh, yeah, so um, it's been kind of a journey for sure. I've been in the industry for over 16 years and I studied exercise physiology so I knew that I've always wanted to be in the fitness world. Um, it's something that I've been passionate about and then uh, my first my early career was with general population and then I knew that I really wanted to work with athletes and improve their athleticism and just make them better athletes. Um, so with that, I created a speed and agility program for the most popular soccer program in Oregon, which is football to everyone else in the part of the world. Um, <clears throat> and from there, then I got the recognition from Nike as one of the only female performance coaches back then, which was forever ago. Um, and so from there, we decided to partner together and collaborate on a fitness app geared for women and this was Nike Training Club and that was a very robust training app that you know helped women work out as a personal trainer in their pocket so they could do a workout anywhere and it was really That's educating great. them on how to train in a gym or outside if you're you know if you have 15 minutes or if you have 45 minutes it's just very um, we just wanted it to be a user-friendly tool for for women and um, from there we wanted to build a community around that and we knew with building the community we would have to actually start with the grassroots and get involved in the communities around the world. Um, so with that I've been able to travel all over the world and really try to inspire and educate and motivate women to you know take pride in their fitness and their wellness and to feel confident and feel okay that they're choosing themselves versus you know, feeling like they have to feel guilty about not being home for their kids or not being able to, you know, climb the corporate ladder or whatever the, the case is. Women have so many responsibilities. Um, so, yeah, so I, I've done that and I've been with Nike for the past like 10 or so years and now I'm venturing off on my own and, and doing some more online training and, you know, traveling, continue to travel. Now I live here in Sri Lanka and I'm so excited. I love it here. So I'm happy to, you know, hopefully help and change some of the ways, you know, just bring female wellness and awareness to uh, the women of Sri Lanka. Great. That's yeah. really, really great. So you mentioned that you've been to different countries or you've traveled all over the world. Could you maybe tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So um, I did two things while I was traveling. One was recruiting and training trainers. So being able to identify, you know, the best trainers within each community, um, who are those community leaders, right? Like who yeah, really resonates with uh, the people in all of the territories that I've been to. Um, and then also teaching and teaching classes to women all over the world. So I've been to places from Japan, which is amazing. I've been to Singapore. I've been to Korea. I've been to Argentina. I've been to... Gosh, Thailand, Taipei, or uh, Taiwan. I've been all over. So I've been everywhere, everywhere. Now you're here in Sri Lanka. Yes. So excited. So I, you mentioned that you focus a lot of, on female empowerment, female well-being. Could you please tell us why? Why you started focusing on the, the women more than the men or the female population in general? Definitely. Um, I think the biggest one is I'm a female, and I've always sought out to you know, gather as much knowledge as I can. Um, I've been through things in life to, you know, being an injured athlete, your classic case of being overtrained, um, being able to, you know, try and have kids and not being able to have them, you know, uh, you know, all these things that women have to deal with. Um, I've been that. And so I've always just wanted to, you know, connect with women who have maybe been through those same experiences or help women who are currently going through those experiences. Yeah, um, and I just feel like we're better together. And there's so much haters out there, you know? I think women tend to not stick together. And I really, shaming. Yes, and it's, it's sad and it breaks my heart because we are so fierce and we are so strong. And we're even more when we're together and supporting each other. And so 
my, I feel like my sole mission on this planet is to truly, you know, make a difference for women and to show what that looks like to support one another. And the best way that I can do that is through the lens of fitness, because that's what I know and, and that's what I'm passionate about. So, um, yeah, it's, I think that's a little bit of everything. So when, when you're speaking about ladies and the importance of fitness for ladies, um, what would you say is a healthy body? I know a lot of ladies think that to be really skinny or to be a size zero or to fit into those shorts you've had for many, many years, that is being healthy. What would you say is your opinion on that? Definitely. Um, I just want to say that it is a reality, right? And I know that most women do feel like they should look or look like someone else or be the size of someone else. Um, and that's not, it's not healthy, right? Because yeah. you're trying to aspire to be something that you're not, and then you're never gonna be confident and feel sexy in your own skin. And to me, that's the most important thing, is really embodying um, the confidence within yourself, because then that's gonna shine through, and then that's real beauty, right? It's, yeah. the, it's the confidence that every woman has. When, it's a great answer. <laughs> yeah, this is great, right? So it's, it's, it's fun, and women should be, so so happy with who they are and you know surround yourself with people who love you for you and who aren't judging you and who aren't haters exactly it's like you know um i mean we're all guilty of it don't get me wrong i do stand inside of my mirror and i'm like where did that dimple come from like that is not going away so i get it we're all there but it's truly like just overcoming that and knowing yeah. that a size zero isn't healthy for every single person or every single woman. I mean, I, I think a healthy size is whatever you feel comfortable in and whatever you feel most confident in. So. Yeah. So, so talking on the healthy aspect of everything, um, a lot of ladies and gentlemen have this opinion that for you to be healthy, you have to, or for you to lose weight, you need to cut down on your carbs. You need to spend two hours on the cardio or on the treadmill machine um, that you have to eat no fruit at all. So when we take it back, what would, you speak, or what would your opinion be on carbs, your daily carb intake? Definitely. Um, you know, we've heard it all, right? Fitness goes through this, all this evolution of what the trendy fad diets are out there. Yeah. And I truly, truly believe in the 80-20 uh, theory, where 80% of your life, you're eating clean, you're eating whole foods, you're cooking for yourself, um, you're eating in moderation, and then the other 20 is you live life, and it happens, right? And that's the most successful way. Um, I don't believe that you should be on a cardio, a piece of cardio equipment for two hours. I don't think that that's smart training. I don't think it's very effective. Um, so carbs, you need them. They're part of your fuel. That's your biggest energy source. And if you don't have that, you're gonna feel lethargic, you're gonna feel weak, you're gonna feel tired, you're probably crashing around two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon. You know, so healthy carbs are an essential to every part of your meal, like every meal that you get within the day. So we usually tell our clients that carbs such as quinoa, uh, potatoes, even basmati rice is really, really healthy. Could you maybe give a few different or other types of carbs that you could say Sri Lankan people can incorporate into their healthy eating lifestyle? I don't want to say diet, but a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely all your rices, right? The steamed rice, the brown rice, the basmati rice, all that's great. Um, the sweet potatoes here are really good. So eat the sweet potatoes. It's a great source of um, carbohydrates and energy. Yeah. Uh, the regular white potatoes are great. And then of course the leafy greens. So your spinach, your kale, your shard, like all that stuff is, uh, it's not, you're not gonna get as much carbs, but it is something that you need to incorporate within um, the Sri Lankan diet for sure, great. or any diet. Also, we've mentioned earlier about fruit. Uh, we tell our clients at High Octane that it's really good to have a banana after you've trained because a banana contains a lot of potassium and it helps with muscle recovery. What would you say is really good uh, or different types of fruit that you can incorporate in your diet? And also a lot of people um, stand back when it comes to fruit because they feel like fruit has a lot of sugar in it and that it will make you fat. So what is your opinion on that? Um, I think fruit, again, if you look at back at the food pyramid, fruit is a part of our daily intake and you have to have it in moderation of course you know if you're having snacks throughout your day maybe not have a fruit every snack and incorporate some vegetables in there as well yeah, um, but you know for pre-workouts I think 
fruit is great because again, you're gonna get that quick sugar boost. You're gonna get a lot of energy to be able to perform with your workouts and it's healthy sugars, right? It's not processed sugars. It's not the candies or the kind bars or like all the stuff that, exactly. So this is, it's a healthy source of carbohydrates and sugars that your body needs. Um, so I'm all for fruit. I think, I think it's great, again, in moderation. Um, but it is definitely something that is going to help with pre and post workouts um, and just replenish your body. And if you're craving something sweet, it's probably because you are craving fruits. Your body is like, I need those sugars. Yeah. So if you're craving that sweet, maybe grab some strawberries or uh, some pineapple. The pineapple and mango here is on point. <laughs> not gonna lie so you know have it and that's gonna be that's gonna kick your sugar fix and it's gonna be healthy for you great so when we spoke earlier about not being on the cardio equipment for a very long time um, me coming from a different country you coming from a different country I think that we both can agree that um, worldwide there's this idea that touching a weight is gonna make you grow biceps overnight or doing a deadlift is gonna make you have the biggest lats you've ever had or the biggest back muscles and leg muscles. What is your opinion on weight training for females? Um, besides the benefit that it's good for your bone density, why would you say a lady should do weight training? Uh, definitely, I mean, cause strong is sexy, right? The, the <laughs> sexy is, the strong is the new sexy. Um, no, but I think strength training is extremely important for women. Um, we, need to have muscle right in order to burn more calories throughout your day in order to again fight osteoporosis and heart disease there's all these benefits to strength training yeah, as well as the physical benefit i mean you are going to look tone you're going to look stronger you're going to feel better you're you going to sleep sexy, right? you're going to look sexy yes everyone wants to look sexy in their bikinis i mean <laughs> come on um but yeah i mean strength training is very very important and Physiologically, women cannot get super bulky because we have the hormone estrogen and we don't have as much testosterone as men. So we're not gonna get super big. You're gonna get muscular, of course, but that is what you want, right? And we're also, I tell all my clients in my classes, we're an onion and we can't change the shape of our onion, right? But we can shed those layers. So if you're getting really strong, you might be predisposed to having bigger muscles and that's, that's okay. Or you could be like someone like me who's predisposed to just being lanky and long and whatever. I've been lifting my whole life and I don't have crazy biceps. So I just don't think that um, strength training is gonna make women bulk up. Um, it is just overall, it's gonna benefit you in so many more ways. And you're more efficient at your program, right? And your training and your healthy lifestyle. You don't have to spend two hours on the cardio equipment if you spend 30 to 40 minutes lifting weights. weights. You're gonna be much so more efficient. So it's the efficient. same effect weight loss, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Even better. Even it's, better. And it's more sustainable. Cause like, I, I don't know if we wanna go over here, but the cardio, I call them cardio bunnies. It's really bad, I know. But um, the people who spend a lot of time on the cardio machines, I'm like, let me take you off there and I'm gonna put you into a weight training program or a strength training program for a week. And your body fat, is gonna drop drastically, right? So the cardio bunnies, the people who do cardio all the time are kind of like the skinny fat, right? They have a high percentage of body fat but because- But they're small, right? But they're small and they look small, but they don't have the muscle tone that you need to be, so, just be strong. So you would say that a, a great benefit of doing weight training is also to assist you in everyday life, yes. to picking things up at home, to lifting yes. something off you if it fell on you. So Absolutely. So that's probably the biggest benefit then. A hundred percent. I agree with you a hundred percent. And you know, my, my style of training is rooted in functional training, which functional training is t supposed to improve everyday lifestyle. Um, so yeah, you're going to, you have a kid on one hip, right? You're carrying your kid around on one hip and then you reach for your grocery bag on another one and you're off centered. That's the easiest way to blow out your back. If you don't have this core strength and if you don't have the glute strength and you know, the strength that you get from lifting weights to be able to manage that and off center it. So it is definitely gonna help. The biggest benefit is just gonna help with your everyday life. Great. And then also some of our followers on Instagram and Facebook have a few questions. Sure. Uh, one of the questions was from a man who weighs 200 pounds and he was asking whether 
because he weighs 200 pounds, his protein is limited. And how much protein should he be eating for his body weight? Okay, I think that's a great question. Um, I can't answer that specifically to, to that person because every formula is different for every single person. Yeah. And I don't know your background and I don't know um, your strength training program. But yes, protein is essential for strength training because you, it's gonna help repair your muscles. It's gonna help give you, it's gonna sustain your hunger, right? So you're not hungry every single time. Yeah. It's gonna keep your insulin levels a little bit more balanced versus the spiking up and down. Um, so protein is very important, but it just it really depends on the person, depends on your training program, and then it also depends on if you can even break down protein, right? Like a lot of women that I've worked with they tell me that they have the protein belly, where they get like a little pooch here and, and they like get bloated. Yeah because they can't, they're eating too much protein and then they can't break it down as fast. So it interferes with the digestive system? Exactly, so um, again, that's just, that's something that I'd work with that specific client on, um, but it, it is really dependent. There's not one formula for every person. It is truly unique to every single person. That's great. So when you say that people have to have the protein every day or at least incorporate protein into their diet, um, I know a lot of people are really scared of taking supplements. Um, it's a new thing. It's, it's really booming right now in the fitness industry, all these supplements that you can take. What is your opinion on taking protein shakes? Yeah, protein shakes are great. I, I do two protein shakes a day. The first one I do right in the morning, 30 minutes of working, uh, waking up, I'm sorry, uh, because it's extremely important to eat something within that or drink something yeah. to get your metabolism going and jump-starting you throughout your day. So I do that and I pair that protein powder with like spinach and kale and then pineapple and mango, of course, and then some coconut water. And then right after my workout to replenish my muscles and to help them repair faster, I'll do just protein powder and water. Yeah. Um, because you need that quickness. So they say like chocolate milk is the best recovery drink because you're getting your protein, you're getting your sugars calcium. and calcium and it's all in a liquid form. So you're able to get that in your system and break it down faster than if you were to go and eat a piece of chicken and have some rice. So you'll agree with me that um, taking protein is really important, but that you should not drink protein and water as a meal replacement, but rather to incorporate your leafy greens, your fruit, to have that more sustainability during the day and have the protein with the water as a pre-workout, right? As a post-workout. Post, post mm -hmm. Sorry, post-workout. Okay, great. Yes. Um, then another question that we had from one of our followers was that she's a house mom or a housewife with two small children. She's extremely busy during the day, um, whether it's waking the children up, getting them ready for school, or picking them up from school, taking them to their daily activities. She only has about 30 to 40 minutes a day, which is not enough time to come to the gym to train. Is that fine or enough time to do something at home? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we don't need to spend an hour even really working out. If you can get, you know, two, like three to four days a week with 30 minutes of really solid, good training, that's plenty. That's, that's good to, you know, keep your body guessing, to keep the momentum going, yeah. to um, keep your energy levels up, to help you sleep at night. All the benefits that you get from exercise, you don't need to be doing an extended period of time. So 30 minutes is plenty to, to work out. And it's better than nothing, right? You, it's an easy excuse to say that you have family and kids and all this, and, and granted, I know that it's gotta be very hard to manage all that, but doing 30 minutes throughout a 24 hour day is very manageable. And it's something that you can uh, aspire to do and feel successful at doing and feel confident yeah. to know that it is enough time to and work having, out. Having more energy um, for a mom, I think is yes. really good to, to have that extra energy, yes. focusing on your children, waking up early, feeling really good about yourself. So yes, absolutely. that's really good. Yeah. Um, the last question we had was that someone wanted to know whether you would choose coffee or tea. Ah, coffee or tea. The, that's the golden question. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Um, I'm a, personally a coffee person, um, but tea or coffee is great. I just, again, I tell my clients, if you're going to have tea or coffee, they both have caffeine in it. Caffeine is a very, uh, it's the fastest way to become dehydrated. And with the humidity here and all the, the heat, you're very dehydrated. So just make sure that you stay hydrated. So I say for every 
you know, eight ounce cup of coffee, you should be having like 16 ounces of water. Yeah, so, so you, every, should be, you should be making sure that you double the, the intake of water. water. Um, I also know that being dehydrated slows down the fat burning process. Yes. So it's good yes. to stay hydrated. Yes, stay hydrated, drink your water. <laughs> so Marie has recently started doing classes here at High Octane, it's called Pure. And she has done her class, oh, her classes start from 7 to 8 in the mornings, Monday morning, Wednesday morning, and recently now in, uh, another class on Monday evening from 7.30 to 8.30. So Marie, can you please tell us about what you're doing in the class? Please tell them why they should be coming to the class. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Pure is a, a combination of functional training and performance training. It's truly to prepare you for life and to, you know, I always say life is dynamic, train for it, and that's what Pure is going to do. You know, it's, a, it's dynamic, you're gonna build on agility, you're gonna get stronger, you're gonna get leaner, and then at the end of it, you're gonna have fun. Like, that's my biggest thing, right. is to make so sure you you're having come. fun. Yes, yeah. you should come, for sure, yes. So, Marie, thank you so much for being here. Yes. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to answer their questions and to, to help us. Um, Marie and I will also be hosting a Girls' Night Out. Yay. We'll be doing a lot of different workshops on nutrition, uh, flexibility, strength training, uh, focusing on women specifically. So keep a lookout on our Instagram and Facebook pages for more information. And that's it. Have a look on our Bye. video for our links. Bye. I look forward to seeing you all very soon.